Question number two of homework nine was quite difficult, but also very important. Now, some people managed to do it quite well because I told you you could follow through the solution from the tutorial sheet. Some of you, when following through this solution, did it a little bit mindlessly and so copied some of the numbers across that you weren't supposed to copy across. Um, but oh well, at least, at least you did look at the solution. Um, but uh, there were some bits that were not very well done, so I'd like to go through those. Um, so this was about a group of order 39, whose centre is G. So we've got order 39, and the centre is, is, I just said G, but I meant E. So it's the trivial, trivial subgroup. So that tells us that the only controversy class of size 1 is the one with the identity in it, which means that when we do the class equation, we're only allowed 1, 1, and everything else has to be, well, everything else has to be a factor of 39. So everything else has to be a 3 or a 13. So if you fiddle around with this, it's quite easy to discover what the class equation has to be. However, when you're writing it down for the purposes of, for example, an exam, um, you should put a little bit more justification in to show why that really is the only controversy class. So we know that we've got to have only one 1, everything else is a 3 or a 13. So what are the possibilities? Well, 13 is the biggest number, so it's probably easiest to deal with that first. If we had 1 13, then what we'd have left over is, uh, well, 39 minus 13 is 26, and that would be 25. Then we'd need 25, some number of 3s, 3k, to be 25, and we can't do that. So we can't have only 1 13. If we had two 13s, then we'd have um, we'd have 39. We'd have two 13s. Take those away. That leaves 13. And then we take away a one. That would leave 12. So we need 3k equals 12. Oh, that's fine. So that shows us that we've got one one. We've got three times k being 12. So that means we've got to have four threes. And then two thirteens. So that's fine. If we had three thirteens, three or more thirteens, that would take us to already greater than 39, together with our one, because we know we've got to have a one. So that means that we can't possibly have more than two thirteens. So we've got to have only one thirty two thirteens. So this has to be the class equation. Right. So the second question said, find the number of elements of order 3 and the number of elements of order 13. Now, quite a lot of people found the number of classes of order 3 and the number of classes of order 13. And this isn't what you were asked to do. So we've got to think about the elements of order 13. And there's a, there's a trick for doing this. And there's no other way of thinking about it except just to remember what this trick is, um, which is that Okay, perhaps I should leave this class equation up here, which is 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 13 plus 13 equals 39. So if we consider something, consider, let me just make the notation the same as the other notation. So if we consider an element A in a conjugacy class of size 3, What we're going to show is that all the elements in these conjugacy classes have order 13, and all the elements in these conjugacy classes have order 3. Now, I'm aware that there's a bit of confusion over this use of the word order, because the order of a set is the number of elements in it. But the order of an element of a group is the number of times that you multiply it by itself before you get back to the identity again. So don't get confused about those two different uses of the word order. OK, so let's consider. Let's consider an element in the conjugacy class of size 3. Well, then we know that it's, in the, that it's an element of its own centralizer. Then A is in its own centralizer, which is a group of order 13. It's of order 39 over 3, which is 13. 
Now, it's a group of order 13. If you're an element in a group of order 13, then you have to have order 13, because you, your order has to divide the size of the group that you're in, and the only way you can do that if you're in 13 is, uh, is if, you're th if you're actually 13. Could it possibly be one? Well, no, because the only element, um, the only element of order one is the identity, and we know we're not the identity because the identity is in this conjugacy class of size one. So this means that the order of A must divide 13, so is 13. So that means that everything in these conjugacy classes has order 13, so everything in conjugacy classes of size 3 has order 13, and everything in conjugacy classes of size 13 similarly has order 3. So that tells you how many there are, because there are going to be 12 of these ones, 12 of those ones, and 26 of those ones. Okay, so now the next part of the question said, um, consider an element of order 13 and show that the, the subgroup generated by it has to be a normal subgroup. So if you consider an element of order 13, what the important thing we know is that which are the elements of order 13? The elements of order 13 are precisely these ones, right? They're the ones in, they're the, ones in the conjugacy classes of size 3. So you can't, you can't automatically assume, if you didn't know about this, you couldn't assume that your subgroup of order 13 consisted of these elements. It's only because you know that they are the elements of order 13 that you know that it consists of these elements. These are precisely the ones of order 13. And because if you take an element of order 13 and you generate a subgroup from it, every element in there apart from the identity has order 13. Um, so we know... We know that, I wrote this out properly in the handout, but we know that it's a union of conjugacy classes. Um, so if we take H of order 13, then everything in the cyclic subgroup generated by H, so this has one element, which is E, and 12 elements of order 13. So it must be this union of conjugacy classes. So it must be these elements. So that's part three. And finally, we want to show that that's the only normal subgroup other than the trivial group and the entire group itself. So remember, again, to be a normal subgroup, you've got to be a subgroup and you have to be a union of conjugacy classes. And if you look at this, so let's think about this for a second. It's just, it's just like what we did in question one, that if H is normal in G, then two things have to be true in particular. One is that the order of H has to divide the order of G, which is 39, um, which means that if it's not the trivial subgroup or the whole thing, it's got to be 3 or 13. And secondly, it's got to be a union of conjugacy classes. So let's think about this for a second. Is it possible to be have three elements that are a union of conjugacy classes, including the identity one? Well, no, because these are already bigger than three. And is it possible to get 13? Well, the only way of getting 13, including E, is this one. And that was the one that we already had. So that shows that that's the only possible normal subgroup of G other than the identity and the whole group.